Welcome to the course Environmental Impact Assessment. Today we will look at the state of fresh water which is essential element for us. So accordingly our coverage will include, we will look into the importance of fresh water, we will uh, look at different pressures on fresh water and especially due to climate change. Further we will look into water and land use and then we will look into global state and trends uh, what are there um, regarding fresh water. Particularly we look into water quantity, water withdrawal rates, we will look at the glacial retreat, water scarcity. Further we will look into water quality, how do we really, uh, what are the determinants in which, uh, at which we look at. So we will look at the pathogens issues, nutrients, sediments and so on. Further we will look into fresh water ecosystems like what is happening with the freshwater ecosystem, the loss of wetlands, biodiversity loss and then impact on human health and other areas. So the expected learning outcomes which is expected from you after you complete this particular session that you should be able to synthesize the significance of fresh water while undertaking EIEA. So when you look at EIEA you should have a conceptual understanding about where you are locating yourself in the entire uh, context. You should be able to discuss the issue of climate change and fresh water, further you should be able to review the relationship between water and land use. You should be able to connect local problems with the global state and trends of fresh water which you are going to see today. You should be able to identify different water quality related issues and parameters and support them with case examples and facts which we are going to see. Further you should be able to discuss the state and issues of freshwater ecosystems. So let us first think of the importance of fresh water. It is essential for our health, our well-being, essential for animals, plants and for both aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems. Its importance has been recognized um, in uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Review, think how many SDGs concerns with water and further uh, many of the SDGs apart from these which are directly connected with water will not, uh, will not be achievable without availability of fresh water. So water is one of the very important, fresh water is one of the very important important part of uh, the entire SDG. So we see that SDG 2 that deals with food security, SDG 3 that deals with health and well-being. So you can see number of SDGs which are directly connected with water. So now moving on we see what kind of pressure is there on fresh water. There is considerable pressure on fresh water due to climate change. We see that the global water cycle which is the most important component of weather and climate system is changing. In the image you can see the global hydrological fluxes and storages. Here it is expressed in 1000 kilometer cube, kilometer cube per year. How much water storage is there in the boxes you can see in the diagram. You can see the natural and anthropogenic cycles use for domestic, irrigation, industry and so on. So you, you can read this diagram and see uh, how, how the water flows. And the major concern is that this cycle is becoming faster due to our warming planet. You may also be aware that fresh water available as surface water in rivers, lakes and wetlands is limited. Uh, it's just 0.4 percent and you may note that the fresh water is decreasing in a very fast rate. So we see that the cycle is also increasing as well as there is decrease in the fresh water also. You may also be noticing around you that there is increased floods and droughts. You have also heard of loss of glaciers. All these changes cause direct and indirect impacts on our health and the health of the ecosystem. 
For example, as stated nearly 1.7 million people die annually from very, very preventable disease diarrhea. And uh, we see in India as per intensified diarrhea control fortnight IDCF guidelines 2019 by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, we see that childhood diarrhea diseases continue to be a major killer among under 5 children in many states contributing to the 10 percent of under 5 deaths in the country. So, that is we are looking at 10 percent is just happening by this. Around 1 lakh children die due to diarrhea annually in the country. So, that is the death rate we are looking at. Diarrhea deaths are usually clustered in summer and monsoon months and the worst affected are children from poor socio-economic situations. There are range of factors that influence fresh water quantity and quality in different regions. The condition worsens due to uneven distribution of fresh water. So, we see that there is uneven distribution of fresh water, some areas have lesser water and some have in abundance. People migrating from one place to the another, from rural to the urban and over and above we now have increasing events of extreme droughts, floods and storms. So, these all influence the availability of fresh water quantity as well as quality. We are also witnessing re reduction in the resilience of the ecosystem because of natural and human made disasters. So, in addition to that we are experiencing disasters along with unsustainable use of fresh water and related ecosystems. So, we, uh, we are also noticing increase in salinization. So, there is also uh, apart from this there is also salinization happening due to the global warming as well as land use changes, melting ice and snow reserves and then also pumping of groundwater and then drying of continents and rising sea levels. So, all these are again influencing the quality of water. We are also noticing change in precipitation with many areas now receive less precipitation on or they face drought than in the past. Uh, whereas, many other experience more rainfall and temperature than before. So, we are seeing this variation happening. Major concern is that fast warming of the polar regions and high mountain region creating unpredictable situations. So, now we have a situation where we are not able to predict. So, we further see that uh, uh, in this situation uh, there is a contrasting situation there is evidence of increasing drought severity in Europe uh, with historical record indicating increased aridity over many areas since 1950s. So, uh, what happens when there is too much rain? It causes pollution whenever too much rain happens we see increase in pollution, we see soil erosion, we see avalanches, mudslides and together all of these together can cause floods, tornadoes and cyclones. So, leading to another disaster these would further cause physical damage to our infrastructure cause loss of life and injury. And looking at what really happens when we have little rainfall. So, when we have little rainfall it causes drought, extreme wildfires, sandstorms, soil degradation and increased competitions over water sources. So, we start the, the, there is conflict for what water sources we have and this often leads to accelerated shrinkage and loss of these goods. So, um, uh, we consume it very fast and then these uh, sources what we have start shrinking. So, very well known example of the shrinking water body is the lake Chad. You can see in the image here and then we have example of Aral Sea, the disappearing wetlands of Islamic Republic of Iran, Lake Armia and Iraqi marshes, then you can also think of the Caspian Sea, 
the videos of these have been given to you in the suggested reading and watch. You can further see their documentaries to understand what is really going on. So, global climate change also interacts with weather and local scale climate effects as well as the unsustainable water uses and diversion leading to dramatic impacts such as shrinking freshwater bodies. So, we see that what is really going on. So, you can see those cases there as well. Collectively, these realities and risk have uh, grave, uh, very, very uh, severe socio-political, economic, environmental and ecological implications. So, if such kind of things happen, see uh, all other dimension it influences, making better management and governance of freshwater resource an imperative. So, it becomes very, very essential for us to look into it. So, now uh, moving on, we will look into water and land use and how they are interconnected. So, water and land use, we also see that because of urbanization and agriculture intensification. So, we are going on witnessing rapid urbanization and then we are also changing land use for the agriculture purpose because we need food. There is uh, issue about food security. We are changing the land use and eventually both surface water and aquifers are depleting. We are reducing those uh, uh, quantity. For the purpose, we are also uh, seeing wetlands are being drained. Further, we see that many rivers, lakes and ponds are disappearing in water scarce regions. So, we are also seeing completely disappearance of rivers, lakes and ponds. So, despite the environmental significance and associated support services, uh, uh, as we see that wetlands has lot of value. Wetlands have been subjected to degradation for past many decades. So, we are going on losing them and we are the condition is deteriorating. As we can see in these images, the present situation of wetlands in North India as they continue to suffer. So, there are uh, other interconnected problems also which we see because of the land use change, the surface hardening happens of the natural areas which reduce infiltration and limits the aquifer recharge. So, all the aquifer we have it limits their recharge as well at the same time increase water runoff and pollution. So, when we have increased water runoff pollution we again face other kinds of problems. So, poor land quality and loss of forest leads to increased runoff carrying eroded sediments through rivers into oceans. So, we also start damaging the ocean and the rivers. So, large scale deforestation is also increasing the chances of reduced precipitation and increase in soil erosion. So, as and when we are going on changing the land, uh, land use, we are using uh, cutting more of forests, then we are increasing the charges, uh, increasing the chances of reduced precipitation, less of rainfall. So, uh, that also increase, uh, increases the chances of soil erosion. We may note as per the report, major parts of the withdrawn water, which we are drawing water is used in agriculture. Uh, though agriculture does not come in the purview of EIA, but you might be, uh, you need to know that major water goes into agriculture in the range of 70 percent. There is always conflict of water usage between agriculture and industry and energy production. So, we see that they all are demanding for water and water demand for energy and if you will see the water demand for energy is much for the purpose of non-consumption such as for uh, cooling of the structure, the mechanism and so on. So, a lot of water goes in that. The interconnect between water, energy and security and food security have identified tensions. So, because uh, all of these need water and uh, there is a trade offs between them, it requires very careful considerations and looking into the matter. 
This nexus becomes especially important when considering drivers such as urbanization, population, economic growth, technology and innovation. So, one needs to really look very careful into it uh, and when you do EIEA and then how any kind of development, how it is changing or how it is influencing uh, these uh, conditions. Now, let us look at the global state and trends of fresh water. So, we will be looking at the trends now and the state the facts, certain facts here. So, first looking at the state of water quantity in the global hydrological map here, you can see how aquifers and groundwater sources are unevenly distributed like we also talked in talked before that we really uh, the uh, water sources are um, unevenly distributed across. Look at the dark blue color indicating major groundwater basin in India. You can see dark blue color over the Himalayan region. So, that region is rich in the water resource. Green color shows the complex hydrological structure. Local and, local and shallow aquifer shown in brown. Dark and light blue polygons with brown boundary are the surface water uh, reflect while you see this reflect how they are distributed and what kind of conflict and challenges it poses. So, you can look at the diagram here. So, uh, we further see that ground water is the major drinking water source and its major drinking water source for majority of people at the global level, particularly it is in the arid regions and during the drought. So, one um, really uses groundwater heavily across the globe. So, it is estimate uh, the estimated available renewable groundwater resource in Africa is said to be more than 100 times that of total annual renewable surface water resource. But, uh, um, using that deep aquifer water is constrained by the exploration as well as the cost which is involved. And if you are familiar with the water condition in Africa, you would know that water is there, but still it cannot be accessed or it is expensive to be accessed. It is unsustainable to access that water. Uh, I have also uh, provided you a link to a video where you can uh, learn more about the issue here. in. Uh, Africa about the water resource, groundwater resource. So, moving on now we will be looking at water withdrawals rate. So, in the following image we see global trends in increasing groundwater use so shown in light green box and line. Look at the increase in the groundwater usage in India and other countries. Water demands varies across geographies and contexts such as urban or the rural areas. So, how, how do we really consume water uh, varies culturally as per, per the geography also as per the context also. Most of the water is used by agriculture as we mentioned before as well and it consumes 70 percent of it. So, you can see the global trend of increasing groundwater. So, groundwater use has plateaued. So, there is certain level of stabilization in some regions, but is increasing elsewhere. So, you can see um, India here such, a, such as in Asia and Pacific and West Asia about two thirds of the fresh water utilized in uh, West Asia. And about 75 percent of European Union inhabitants rely on groundwater for drinking and groundwater use compared with the surface water has increased substantially uh, in the rate of 1.3 trillion uh, meter cube per year across North America. So, it is been extracted uh, very heavily. So, uh, we further see that UNEP report 2012 report suggests that it is because of increased agriculture groundwater usage that has caused increase in depletion rates in major aquifers. So, because of this major aquifers are getting impacted in arid and semi arid zones. We are mining some of the large aquifers in an unsustainable manner by exceeding their long term natural recharge rates. So, all aquifers have their recharging rates. So, we have been exceeding those rates. 
further we see that uh, the problem particularly fact if you look at five of the world's seven largest aquifers are in Asia and the Pacific and are overstressed. So, they have been used ex extensively. It is also reported that because of excessive groundwater abstraction, there is also sinking of the land area in coastal cities such as we can see in Bangkok, Ho Chi Minh City, Jakarta, Manila we can see. So, I have provided you a link for that you can see the image here of Bangkok how the uh, sinking is sinking of the city is taking place and other cities you can see from the suggested watch and uh, readings. Over exploitation of an aquifer can also impact wetland ecosystems. So, um, uh, once we uh, over exploit aquifer it can also impact wetland e ecosystem. Hydraulic fracturing uh, for like all the resources like oil and gas extraction they also like impact the groundwater. So, access to groundwater may be further limited to the climate change impact due to the rise in sea level. So, as and when uh, sea level is also rising due to climate change, it is further um, increasing the problem of access to water, groundwater. Most of the islands are experiencing increasing fresh water shortages. So, that is also happening. Now, looking at the problem of glacial retreat. So, we are going to now look at what is glacial retreat. Because of the climate change there is impact on the availability of water in the region around the world. In particular areas which are dependent on the melted water um, melted water of the glacier. So, uh, a lot of our area is dependent on glacial uh, water. For example, Hindu Kush Himalayas as you can see in the image here, this region is largely dependent on the melted water, melting water from 10 river systems such as uh, Amudarya, Brahmaputra, Ganga, Indus, Iravadi and so on. You can see here as shown in blue lines and glacier shown in pink polygons. So, you can see that how this river system and then the uh, glacier uh, all that provides water for us. So, Hindi Kush Himalayas provides water to 20 percent of the world's population. So, it is a huge number what we are looking at huge proportion what we are looking at here. In this image you can see retreat of uh, Calciacaya ice cap in Peru between 1988 uh, what you can see in the left hand side to uh, the condition in 2010 in the right hand side. Note how the snow area is reducing pay attention to those areas at the edges see the difference between the two. Studies show similar loss in tropical glaciers in ants in European Alps also in Central Asian glaciers large population and ecosystem downstream depends on the available fresh water. So, uh, I have uh, given you the link to all these documentaries which you can further if you are interested you can look at those. Now, moving on we will try to understand what is scarcity. Let us see what we mean by what is scarcity. What is scarcity is defined as less than when when uh, it is less than 1000 meter cube per capita of available renewable fresh water per year. So, that is when we say water scarce. So, um, and excessive withdrawals are often caused by water scarcity. So, uh, whenever um, uh, we uh, we are excessively withdrawing it is because there is less water. So, there is also a term. So, there is one term which is water scarcity, but then you will be also you will familiarize yourself with another term which is economic water scarcity. It is used where storage treatment and conveyance like the uh, how to store it, how to treat it and how to transport it all those infrastructure are lacking. So, that then even though water is there, but it cannot reach to the people then we say it economic water scarcity. 
So lack of infrastructure combined with rapid population growth can lead to economic water scarcity, although there are debates on actual cause of water scarcity. So like what really causes water scarcity is debatable. In the image you can see global, physical and economic water scarcity. So you can see the two here, the blue polygon indicates the physical water scarcity when we really say as per the definition what is the water scarcity and the black polygon shows economic water scarcity. So you may note the difference here and you may see um, in Indian context also what is how is the variation here. So, water of appropriate volume and quality is not always available at the right time or in the right place for specific use. What is scarcity is common throughout West Asia and the Asia and the Pacific region and in arid parts of Africa like you had seen in the map, Latin America and Western United States of America and the Middle East. So, it is like you can see it is widespread factors like uh, what really causes water resource stress, uh, uh, we see that it is the large population, pressure of population, then the agriculture expansion as agriculture uh, consumes most of the water and the intensification, variation in the rainfall, how the rainfall is changing and then we also see this very fast development and then increasing urbanization, industrialization as well as climate change. So all of these cause water resource stress. Further we see another problem that is desertification. Desertification is a pressing problem in Africa's sub-Saharan region arising from climate change and internal migration. So th that is also happening here. So you see a lot of desertification happening. In the parts of developed worlds, you see the desertification also happening in Europe, North America, Australia. Water scarcity is the challenge that is commonly addressed through large water infrastructure projects such as dams. In parts of the developed world, we see that uh, in particular in Europe, North America, Australia, water scarcity is a challenge. So it's uh, it, it's it's a problem that is commonly addressed through large water infrastructure projects. So there are a lot of water structure, water infrastructure projects coming up such as dams, long distance pipeline and desalinization plants. Given expected population growth trends, regions such as Middle East, Africa and Asia need to address water scarcity in innovative and scale appropriate ways including water governance, rainwater harvesting and water wastewater recycling and uh, they need to come over, leapfrog the conventional solutions of the past and need, they really need to have innovative solutions to handle this. So that was about the state and trends of fresh water. Now we will look at concerns of the water quality. So looking at the main human activities. Uh, Water quality is also influenced by natural system, but we are going to look at primarily at the human activities that cause, uh, that in influences the water quality such as uh, you have uh, po population growth, urbanization, agriculture expansion, transportation and human and industrial waste. So you see that how it uh, pollutes the water. So pollution, if we look at what pollution includes, it includes pathogens, nutrients, heavy metals and organic chemicals. You can see in the snip of the table from the global environment outlook, the table shows water contaminants and their sources. These pollutants come from point sources, point sources such as domestic, industrial or sewerage pipeline. Uh, discharge septic tank leakages or it can also come from uh, non-point sources. So like land surface, runoff from extensive diffuse agriculture use and urban areas following rainfall and snow melt events. So uh, it is reported that water quality of many lakes and reservoirs is 
particularly at the risk of extinction across the globe because of long water residence time. So water uh, is very stable for quite some time and its tendency to accumulate pollutants. So that's why we see that uh, the lakes are lakes and reservoirs are at particular risk because it's it's stagnant water and it has chances pollutants have chances to um, settle in for longer time. So groundwater pollution sources include non-point agriculture and urban runoff on site on site wastewater treatment, oil and gas extraction and fracking activities, mining and industrial sources. So all most most of this comes under the purview of EIA, so you would be learning about that further, that how it is influencing our groundwater pollution and what kind of how you really need to evaluate that. So further we see about the pathogens. So pathogens are major concerns causing waterborne diseases. Waterborne disease continue to be a major challenge in many African, Asian, Pacific and Latin American cities and rural communities. So you can review the scenario in the same table. You can see you may note that parasites can survive water body conditions for many weeks. And viruses may survive drinking water treatment as well. So even if the wa water is treated, it, the viruses can survive that. So uh, you may consider those things and uh, see these from the facts here. Further we see the nutrients. Let us familiarize ourselves with the term eutrophication. Eutrophication represents a natural aging process of lakes and wetlands wherein they become enriched with nutrients. So it, it uh, gets more of nutrients and sediments and uh, becoming more biologically productive usually over a long period. So because of our activities, the nutrients loads uh, can drastically increase uh, what goes into the water, the nutrients would drastically increase and this process accelerates uh, speeds up. Exploration damages the whole ecosystem. So, because of uh, the, it getting rapid nutrients, it damages the whole ecosystem and eventually reduces its usability for our activities also. So, it damages the ecosystem at the same time it reduces its usability for our activities and affects our environment. So algal blooms can turn water body opaque and green in color leading to reduction in water. What is oxygen content when algae die and undergo decomposition? So it also causes loss of oxygen and when there is loss of oxygen then it um, is uh, it kills fish life, uh, life also in the water. Some blue green algae species are toxic to, toxic to fish and livestock and affects our health as well. Studies also indicate a clear relationship between climate change and eutrophication of lakes. So in the image you can see the dead zone also called hypoxic zone in the Gulf of Mexico because of nitrogen from Midwestern United States of America carried down the Mississippi River with which eventually decay of algae growth consuming oxygen in the water and it has suffocated the marine life. So it is said to be the dead zone therefore uh, there are nearly four times as many dead zones in the ocean now uh, as they were in 1950s. So we are finding more and more dead zones in the ocean um, including the Mediterranean Sea. So I have also provided you the link for additional uh, watch if you are interested to see. In the image here you can see the model estimates of trends in the fecal coliform bacteria which are the group of bacteria that are passed through the fecal excrements of humans, livestock and wildlife levels in rivers and the, you can see um, the difference in 1990-92 to 2008-10. and 10. Look at the red color so you can see how is the spread of this. Now moving on, we will look at the other determinants of the pollutant. Here we see sediments. We, um, 
we see the issue of sedimentation which happens from erosion of exposed soil surfaces. These eroded soil get deposited in basin through the throughout the world. So, it is happening throughout the world including in Africa, Asia and Latin America because of the land use change causing deforestation and unplanned settlements are major causes of soil vulnerability to erosion. So, because we are continuously changing the land use uh, uh, and causing deforestation, uh, there is an uh, issue about unplanned settlements. So, our soils are getting vulnerable to ero erosions and storm generated runoff carries soil into the downstream water bodies. So, we are also damaging the water bodies. In the image you can see the tailing sediment from Samarco dam in Brazil. So, you can see here. So, you can further refer table for impact causes and facts. You can see here the contaminants and their sources. Moving on, now we will look at organic pollutants. Further looking at the organic pollutants such as liquid manure, sewerage affluence and sewage treatment sludge and so on. Um, biodegradation of these depleted uh, biodegradation when biodegradation happens these deplete oxygen concentration. So, whenever these organic pollutants are biodegraded they deplete the oxygen concentration in the water bodies and oxygen depletion leads to fish kills and higher biochemical oxygen demand BOD when there is high BOD from microbial decomposition these pollutant causes release of heavy metals from bottom sediments back into the water column. So, you see the kind of damage that happens. So, studies based on the model analysis uh, indicates BOD concentrations increased in many parts of Africa, Asia and the Pacific and Latin America during 1990. 2010 from because of the industrial and domestic wastewater discharge and agriculture and urban runoff with highest increase in rapidly urbanizing and industrializing countries. So, that is happening more in uh, now urbanizing and industrializing countries. BOD pollution is most uh, developed countries has significantly reduced uh, with the um, um, enhanced wastewater treatment systems. So, uh, so, we also see synthetic organic pollutants which include pesticides, industrial chemicals and solvents and personal care and pharmaceutical products. Then we also see persistent organic pollutants POPs are particularly problematic because they do not readily biodegrade, biodegrade in the aquatic environment. And uh, you may know that these are used by many industries in agriculture applications. They can impact human health, aquatic ecosystem, persisting in fatty tissues of human fish and other organism and accumulating in sediments. So, in the image you can see anthropogenic total phosphorus loading to lakes for five largest lakes by surface area in each of the five UN environments regions. So, uh, showing average percentage contribution in 2008 and 10 annual loads you can see here. You can see how much loading is happening from manufacturing, agriculture, urban surface, runoff and so on. So, pay attention to those legend and look at the colors how it is distributed here. So, moving on further we see the pollutant heavy metals. We are also facing problem of heavy metal which are used in industrial agriculture sectors, water intensive mining and so on. They degrade the water. Concerns are serious in some Asian, Pacific and South America, African and Latin American countries. They also damage plants, man, many like mercury, lead, chromium, cadmium are toxic to human and aquatic organisms. So, ground water pollution due to metals also has been reported uh, to have occurred in uh, Canada as well because of the sand, uh, tar sand industry. So, industries also have a role to play here. We see that the natural arsenic groundwater contamination in South Asia and other countries in Asia and the Pacific that is already there naturally, but that gets further de aggravated with the with our activities of metal mining and groundwater abstraction. 
you may refer to the critical example of heavy metal contamination involved uh, with the Flint, Michigan case. So, where the source of water had to be changed. So, now uh, we will look at the another uh, component of water quality that is salinity. Salinity happens due to increase in quantity of dissolved minerals in fresh water from the land use change. So, it's, it happens because of the land use change, agricultural irrigation drainage, lake evaporation and seawater intrusion, sea level rise, water abstraction so on. And if excess salinity happens, uh, then it is unsuitable for human consumption. So, we cannot consume it and then many of the plants and organisms have limited tolerance to salinity. So, salinity problems prevails in Africa, Asia and Pacific and Latin America and all this and then um, and it has been increasing because of the industrial water uses. Saline water intrusion into coastal aquifers can result from over abstraction and mismanagement as well as sea level rise. So, salinity impact the quality of environment and as well as impacts the food security. There are now many emerging contaminants. So, you have seen certain of them, a few of them. Now, there are many other emerging contaminants such as human and veterinary pharmaceuticals, personal care products, insect repellent, so what all stuff we use, you, you may look at that and uh, also microplastics and manufactured nanomaterials. So, these all are new contaminants we are seeing. United States Geological Survey detected such contaminants in majority of sample streams in US. So, you can see how what is the level of contamination. In the image you can see the model estimates of trends in biochemical oxygen demand concentrates in river between 1990, 92 to 2008 to 10. The red color streams indicate the increasing concerns. Scan through where, scan through, through the image and see where all you see the red color streams you can see here. So, in the image you can see the source and pathways of pharmaceuticals and personal care products entering surface and ground water. You can see here how it is happening, all the sources how they are entering. Further we see plastic waste is another major concern. Microplastic are also con, uh, can also con, uh, can contain and absorb toxic chemicals. Electronic waste is another concern which we see because of the widespread abundance. We have lot of electronic waste and unknown risk to surface and groundwater quality. So, we are still do not, we do not know what kind of impact it has. So, uh, if we further see there are other groundwater quality concerns as well which is important from EIA perspective. You will see the groundwater pollution from oil and gas fracking activities which are large quantities of chemicals and discharge large volumes of produced water. So, that all gets into groundwater and also the byproducts of all these activities, there are a range of products which also uh, which happens during the operations are also of concerns. Uh, we further see lake and acidification, thermal pollution, radionuclides are also problems here we see. Now, we we'll look at the freshwater ecosystem. So, there is a continuing loss of wetland. So, we are experiencing loss of wetland. Examples of freshwater ecosystem or inland wetland include marshes, swamp, peatland, wetland forest, rivers, lakes, ponds and head waters all these are examples of freshwater ecosystem um, and they provide range of functions. So, there is like it, it does a lot of things such as it provides uh, it uh, provides regulatory and supporting ecosystem services. We will also see all these in the ecosystem services in the method section where we study that. So, in the image you can see the status and trends of the world's wetland and uh, wetlands disaggregated by region. And you uh, look at the dark green line indicates the trend in Asia. So, you can see here how the wetlands are reducing and pay attention to the dark green line here. So, ecosystem services for all wetlands types have been valued. So, it has um, we will also look at the valuing system. Uh, so, it has been valued financially across and the value of it ranges from US dollar 300 to nearly million USD per nine, nearly 9 million 
USD per hectare per year. So, you see the value which is there. Peatlands are very important as they have a high carbon sequestration value. As they have high carbon sequestration value, hence they contain more carbon than all global forest biomass combined. So, you are seeing the image of the world's largest tropical peatland in Congo River Basin containing an estimated 30 gigatons of carbon. So, you can see here, I have also given you the link to further watch you can see there are issues of draining the peatland worldwide in the part, past decade of changing uh, land use. We are also witnessing biodiversity loss, studies indicate loss of flora and fauna because we are losing all these so that is also creating that. Wetlands do have the capacity to filter and improve water quality however beyond a certain point of uh, like the tipping point of wetland can no longer regenerate itself. We are also witnessing fragmentation of rivers through while we are constructing dams, we are creating water diversion um, with resultant wetlands habitat losses and degradation. So, while we are fragmenting it, the, these all things are happening, this has significant impact. So, dams and reservoirs for water storage and hydroelectric power are seen from different perspective. So, it has been used a lot, but at the same time the usages are also going down. In recent year dam construction in industrialized countries has slowed considerably. Many older dams are being decommissioned for economic and environmental reasons. And uh, so, uh, uh, dam uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, dam remains highest in the industrialized countries. Dam density nevertheless remains highest in the industrialized countries. So, now looking at the impact of problems in fresh water, uh, it has impact on human health, causes gastrointestinal illness. Predicted change in hydrological cycle with climate change may increase the environmental health related disease. In the image you can see the morbidity from diarrheal disease of all ages for females. Pay attention to the red color as shown by the uh, through the study here. You look at the red color, the most severe areas. Then in the image you can see the morbidity from diarrheal disease for male. So, you look the color difference, how it is different for men and women here. So, it, uh, it impacts the food security as well. So, that also we see. And then furthermore, we see that human safety and security is also concerned, degraded water quality, physical and economic water scarcity and loss of freshwater ecosystem services have significant impact on human safety and security. So, whenever floods happen, droughts happen, it affects large number of vulnerable people with security and there is also migration implications. So, uh, that all what we saw, so summarizing what we covered today, we discussed about the importance of fresh water, we looked into the climate change and fresh water, we looked at how the relationship between water and land use. Further, we also looked at the global state and trends of fresh water like what is really happening. So, that when you do EIA, you have a, a larger perspective of the environment. Uh, then uh, we looked at, we identified different water quality related issues and parameters and then we discussed the state and issues of freshwater ecosystem and we also looked at the um, impact what happens. So, that is all for today um, and this was our references and our coverage has been limited as per the scope in this of the subject, additional resources to read and watch are provided to you. So, you can uh, look at all these uh, suggested reading and watch here. Thank you.